Hey, it's Brock here with Rock Hill Farms, and I'm out here today to harvest some walnut trees. Should be a lot of fun. I guess I'll just get started cutting. But not with this. Man, I love that walnut smell. Absolutely fantastic. I tried to cut this a lot lower than what I've been doing in the past and leave a trigger. Not exactly the way the loggers do it because I'm not a logger, but a little bit closer. And you know, any tree that lands where you want it to without anybody getting hurt, it's a good thing. Got the first one down. The one right next to it's bigger, but we'll get this out of the way first. Just letting you know that the title and thumbnail are not clickbait. That barber chair happened, but it was on the second tree of the day. And I'm going to show you exactly what I did wrong. And it's such an obvious mistake. I can't believe I made it. But I'm committed to showing the good and the bad on this channel. So that's what you get. Speaking of showing mistakes, it seems like I always forget to bring something, and today I forgot to bring my plastic wedges. So we used a steel wedge while cutting with a chainsaw, which isn't very smart. Big picture, I'm really excited to be out here working on this. Here in a couple months, this entire area is going to be cleared with dozers. And basically from now until then, I've got access to clear as much lumber as possible or firewood out of here. And the older gentleman that you see working in the background has a sawmill that he's going to work some of this up on. But anything that doesn't fit with his sawmill goes to my house. That means logs that are too big for his sawmill that I can save for when I get a mill. But it also means the smaller stuff or crooked stuff like you see on the screen now, and I'm going to use that for firewood. There are multiple species of tree out here, but there's a lot of walnut. So you're gonna see multiple videos out here harvesting walnut.
We're gonna take this tree right here next. You can see it's got a good bit of lean on it. All of the weight is on the same side as the lean, but it seems like a healthy tree, so that's the best news. We'll see what the chips look like coming out of it. And there's a good chance, I don't think it'll necessarily get hung up, but it is going to hit some of these smaller trees. I'm hoping that it's got enough weight and momentum to come on down to the ground. You guys can feel free to critique my cutting technique in the comments and I'm still fairly new at this and trying to learn as quick as I can and surround myself with people with more experience but I feel like I made a couple of obvious mistakes here and I'll talk more about that as we buck the tree up. Okay, the reason that happened is as I cut back to the trigger, I had left too much hinge. I want to leave about an inch and a half to two inches, and I left probably three inches of hinge, and it's even thicker in the middle. So that was, a, that was the mistake there. So falling it was the easy part, now what's left is the hard part. And I kind of messed up the easy part, so I don't know how this is gonna go. But we wanna rip this limb right here off. I'm gonna put a notch in the limb and then see if we can snap it off with the skid loader. There's so much weight up in the air, but it's gonna be harder to get down then than it looks, I think. There's going to be a wide range of people who watch a video like this. Some will be loggers and tree felling experts, and some will have never cut a tree down. So I'm going to try to give a quick explanation for the people who know even less than I do. A traditional cutting method with a face cut and then a back cut leads to a barber chair on a leaning tree like this because all of the weight that's leaning out causes your hinge to break before you get it thin enough for it to break cleanly. And that's when it breaks early and stretches all that fiber and does what you just saw. Now the method I use prevents that by letting you set your hinge width before cutting the trigger on the back. But doing all of that is completely pointless if you don't get the hinge thin enough. And I knew that, and for whatever reason, I just didn't look closely enough or give enough thought to how thick my hinge was. Pretty obvious mistake, and I'm just lucky that no one got hurt.
I guess all's well that ends well, but I made an obvious mistake. I hope you guys can learn from it. I know that I did. I appreciate you taking time to watch the video. You should see links on the screen to a couple more of our videos, and I'll see you next time.